Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be solving a nice exponential equation. We have 3 to the power a plus 9 to the power a plus 27 to the power a equals 14. And we're going to be solving for a values. I'm going to show you a method that you can use to solve these kinds of exponential equations because these are challenging exponential equations is somewhat challenging they're not super duper standard like 3 to the power x equals 81 where you can find the answer immediately but these require a little bit more thought and then we're going to be looking at a graph the graph of a function which is kind of interesting because we kind of need to talk about a little bit of calculus okay but don't be scared by the word because it's actually easy it's just a tool that we use to look at the behavior of functions. Okay, great. So let's go ahead and turn this into a polynomial by using substitution. Notice that all of these numbers are powers of 3, right? Have you noticed that? 9 is 3 squared, 27 is 3 to the third power. Don't worry about the 14 for now. So I'm going to call this something. How about t or x? X is probably good because we're going to use it on our graph. So if 3 to the power a is x, then 9 to the power a is just going to be 3 to the power a squared, which is x squared. And 27 to the power a is 3 to the power a cubed, and that's x cubed. Now, why is 27 to the power a 3 to the power a cubed? Because 27 to the power a can be written as 3 to the power 3 to the power a, and then 3 to the power 3 to the power a is 3 to the power 3a. So when the exponents are multiplied, it's like superpower property. We can also write this as 3 to the power a times 3, or 3 to the power a to the power 3. To keep a long story short, if you're trying to cube an exponential, just cube the base, and you'll be good to go. Make sense? This is x. Oops. Okay, I gotta go back a little bit. All right, cool. So now, here's what we're gonna do. We're going to put it all together. What do we have in our equation? We have 3 to the a plus 9 to the a plus 27 to the a, which is equivalent to x plus x squared plus x to the third. And we know that it's equal to 14. The fact that we use substitution here, like replacing 3 to the a with something, doesn't change the fact that our expression is equal to 14, because 14 is constant. That's what's nice about constants. They don't change. Okay, so now we got ourselves a polynomial equation, right? Which is fairly easy to solve, especially this one. Obviously, to solve this equation, let's write it in a more standard form like this where we put the 14. Now, we can go ahead and subtract 14 from both sides and set it equal to 0. Now, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to break down the negative 14 into three pieces so that each one goes along with one of the powers of x. Make sense? Okay, how do we do that? I'm just going to do the following. I'm going to write this as x cubed minus 8 plus x squared minus 4 plus x minus 2. Now you might be questioning like why did I break it down like that? Why didn't I do x cubed minus 7 or x cubed minus 6 or x cubed minus 5? Well here's the reasoning. 8 is a perfect cube and 4 is a perfect square. That's why they go perfectly with those powers. But why is the sum 14? Because it's given that way. How did I know that? Well, I kind of wrote this problem, so I know ahead of time what's going to happen. So I know it's not fair. We're kind of working backwards here. All right, so here's what happens. We basically can find a root by inspection or using what is called a rational root theorem. Rational root theorem, RRT. So we look at basically factors of 14, 1, 2, 7, 14, and the plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, minus, so on and so forth. There are eight candidates, right? And this is monic, so we don't have to worry about the coefficient of x cubed. Those are the candidates. You can test them out. I did, and I found x equals 2. No, that's not right. I already knew x equals 2. That's how I came up with the problem. So x equals 2 is a potential solution. That's why it makes sense to break it down like this. You see? Okay. Now, x cubed minus 8 is factorable, so I can write it as x minus 2 
times x squared plus 2x plus 4. This is called difference of two cubes. x squared minus 4 is sum of two cubes. I'm sorry, difference of two squares. What am I talking about? And x minus 2 is just 1 times x minus 2. Um, don't worry, I'm going to carry the stuff to the left so we have more room. Uh, oops, I don't think that's going to work. Let's try one more time. All right, I want to carry this whole thing. Here we go. Okay, good. Now I have more room. Yeah, so I can write the parentheses here. Of course, I have to go to the pen, and here we go. Okay. Now, this expression is equal to 0. Remember that. Let's go ahead and factor out x minus 2. If you take it out, you're going to end up getting x squared plus 2x plus 4 plus x plus 2 plus 1. Let's go ahead and simplify the second one, second factor, x squared plus 3x plus 7. So here's the thing. Let me tell you something. Once you get x minus 2 as a factor, because you know x equals 2 is a solution, that means by factor theorem, x minus 2 is a factor, the factoring process will be fairly easy. Anyways, you, you get the idea, hopefully. Now our expression is equal to 0, and from here we find solutions. x equals 2 is a solution. What about the other solutions, right? Well, I can go ahead and set this equal to 0 by using the quadratic formula, negative b plus minus the square root of b squared, which is 9 minus 4ac, which is 28. Uh-oh, we got ourselves a complex, complex solution. Because this is going to end up being the square root of negative 19, which can be written as plus minus square root of 19i. So we have to include the imaginary numbers in this case, which means that you're not going to get real solutions from here but the other x equals 2 is going to give you a real solution. But what is x, right? Where does x come from? x is 3 to the power a. So let's go ahead and back substitute. x equals 2, and that's equal to 3 to the power a. From here, if you log both sides, a is going to become log 2 with base 3. So that's the answer. Let's go ahead and look at this function from a functional calculus perspective, whatever that means. So suppose we have our function f of x as x cubed plus x squared plus x, and I'll show you the graph, and when I do, this will make much more sense. But to understand how functions behave, like whether they are increasing or decreasing on a certain interval, we differentiate them, which is the derivative, right? Rate, which is also called rate of change of a function. That's why there's, uh, it's called rate of change, because it shows you the change. So it's going to be 3x squared by using the rules, plus 2x plus 1, so you might be kind of finding different intervals, like set it equal to 0 and check the discriminant, right? So x is going to be negative b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. Oh, no. We're getting another complex roots from here, right? This means that this equation is never going to be 0 for real values of x. But we're, we were looking for real values of x, so no real solutions, which means the derivative is always positive which means our function is always increasing. And you'll see it on the graph. That's why it's always increasing, even though it's quadratic, no real roots. And here's our function. As you can see, it's always increasing. Therefore, there's going to be a single real solution. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.